Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Market Wrap. So I am back in Philly, and I didn't even make it back to Connecticut this weekend, but I did manage to make it to Atlanta for a day of meetings and racing Porsches at their Experience Center. It was awesome. Then I got to spend the weekend with my wife in Cincinnati at a wedding of my friend's daughter. It was fantastic being out celebrating with all our friends. So three watches I love this week and all very different. So the first one we're gonna talk about is an Urwerk, the 103 in rose gold. It's beautiful piece. It is quite an unusual piece. It gives you that great digital display. It's a fascinating watch. When I first saw them, uh, it was a little weird for me, but now I'm really starting to appreciate them. I think it's a great example of it. Love the rose gold black version. The second piece is a Royal Oak Offshore Audemars Piquet and it's the Diver. Now this to me is like a perfect summer watch. It's big, it's steel, it's got the black dial. I love this watch on me, I love big watches. It's just a great piece to have in the collection. And the last piece we're gonna talk about is a very rare, unusual piece, and it's a Vacheron 222. Now a lot of people have probably never even heard of the 222. This was Vacheron's answer to the Royal Oak and the Nautilus. Um, it was their sports version. It was not terribly successful. Uh, rumors are they made somewhere between 500 and 1,000 ever. Um, it's just a pristine example. Comes with a complete set. Just really a, what I think should be a super collectible piece that really hasn't gotten any attention lately. So just as we thought the auction season was winding down, we had an interesting Sotheby's auction last week on Thursday. And I thought it would be good to have an interesting perspective on what the market is doing in general, and specifically the Longa market. Uh, as most people know, I love Longa. I follow the van brand very closely. Over the past few auction cycles, we've seen some outstanding results. The first one we talked about was the Hundes Work Kunz 1815 Rattrapont. It brought over 600,000. We are regularly seeing Odysseus's bring two and a half to three times retail. And for years, a longa over retail was unheard of. But over the past year, it's becoming a kind of a regular occurrence. Now in this Sotheby's sale, we had a great longa lumen moon phase. Now this is the third longa moon phase that Sotheby's has sold over the last two years. Now the first one went off in April of 2019, sold for $96,000. The second one sold April of 2020, basically right in the midst of COVID, sold for $72,000. So I was following this piece closely. It had an estimate of 30 to 50,000. I was expecting we could see kind of the first over 100,000 result, but I was shocked by the final result. It brought in 163,800, well over two times the result from just 14 months earlier. And now Lumen watches have always been some of the favorite pieces. We've seen a big uptick in interest in this collection, but this was certainly a breakout result. Now also in the same sale, we had a Richard Longa Tourbillon Paul Marie. It's an amazing Tourbillon, it's a big piece. It's gorgeous. It retails for $233,400. It only brought 94.5 all in. The 1815 Tourbillon in the same sale retails for over 200,000, only brought 88.2. Now, traditionally, long in the secondary market has always been a little soft. It was one of the complaints a lot of collectors had about it. But now we're seeing this huge divide in the market where certain models are selling at huge premiums or others are trading at huge discounts to retail. But this is something I have seen before and specifically in the Jorn market about two to three years ago. Super rare or collectible pieces would sell at astronomical numbers while the regular pieces we were selling at substantial discounts. Now, fast forward two years, and almost every Jorn is selling at crazy retail prices, and the collectability has spread across the brand. We've seen the same phenomenon in Rolex, where a couple years back, obviously Steel Daytonas were well over retail, Blue Skies always sold over retail, but now basically every sports model sells over retail, and even gold pieces and Datejust sell over retail. So I would not be surprised if we could see the same thing in a year or two on Longa, where we might have wished we grabbed up some of these high complications at these super low levels. So last week we talked about the Manjo's Value Plays, kind of underrated, underhyped, overlooked watches. 
And we thought we'd do it again, but a little different twist. This week, we're gonna talk about pieces that are under $10,000. We get a lot of interest in this price point, and there's some great values to be had. The first piece we're gonna talk about is the Rolex Air King, the 116900. Now this is a 40 millimeter sports watch. It's got a cool Arabic dial, a little touch of green. I think it's one of the best looking pieces in the collection. It's an unusual Rolex dial. And I really believe this piece will be discontinued next year as they're constantly upgrading the movements. The last two in the collection are kind of the Air King and the Milgaus. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes away in a year. And I think this is a great value to grab today. The second piece we're going to talk about is the Omega Speedmaster, and specifically the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Now, the Speedies come in all different versions, but they made five specific references for the 2020 Olympics, which of course didn't happen. They are going to be a 2021 Olympics, but I think this will be a long-term collectible piece. Uh, the watches have been super soft over in Asia uh, with all the negativity towards the Olympics. I still think they're gonna go forward. I believe we're gonna see these watches in a few years become collectible. A lot of the old speedies have really taken off. This might be the next one to go. And the last piece is a Cartier. And again, we don't talk very much about Cartier, but I think the large Santos models with the interchangeable straps, the bracelets, especially the blue dial version is a beautiful watch. I think it's an amazing value in that $7,000 price range. So that was this week's Market Wrap. Hope to see you next week.